Now Andrew's going to be back on the play, and that's pretty dangerous for Brian. The Zudek going first makes a huge difference. Well, mental misstep is really what Brian needs here in his draw. Mental misstep, sorts of plowshares, is when he needs to catch back up. And again, just needs to get that Knight of the Reliquary up and going, because if that happens, well, you saw what happened that game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, and he had to protect that Knight of the Reliquary at all costs. Yep. And he found the misstep for it, and that was exactly what he was looking for. Mm -hmm. Played well, and he was rewarded for it. Yeah. So Andrew's gonna be on the play, and if he gets a fast draw, like you know, Nicotl into Goblin Guides, or followed by Burn Spells or Path to Exile, it could be rough for Brian Boss. Could be having a draw like he did against the Enchantress player, you know, Wild Nicotl, Goblin Guide, Goblin Guide. Yeah. The oh man, the double Goblin Guide guy it's, draws are yeah. always the most insane. I mean, in standard, you see them out of the red decks, and the red decks almost, you know. I think someone did the stats and single Goblin Guide alone on turn one was 20% additional to win or something like that. And you know, you look at Bald Nakato, Goblin Guide, Goblin Guide, like the double Goblin Guide draws yeah. almost never lose. Yeah, you have to flood insane. out very hard or your opponent has to have a really good hand to win. Yeah, it's pretty insane. Let's see here. This players are shuffling up. I don't think any of them made any sideboard changes. Both of them seem pretty content with yeah. How they uh, chose to manage their decks going into game two. Seemed like a pretty straightforward process. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think that the cards you take out on both sides, they make a lot of sense naturally. Some players, like I said, might take out Dark Confidant yeah. if you're Brian Boss, but I don't think it's correct to do that. So the winner of this goes on to face the Manalist Dredge deck. <laughs> right. I think both of them have a pretty good matchup there. Um, Living Wish for Bajukabog, Knight for Bajukabog, whichever one you choose is going to be great. And uh, both of them have pretty good clocks. So that's going to be, well, at the very least, an interesting matchup. Brian Boss already beat the other Dredge player who top eight earlier this event. And uh, Vampire Hacks Mage is pretty brutal against uh, Bridge from Below. <laughs> it's, you know, it's funny you should say that. Because I was playing in a local legacy tournament, and my opponent, it was his first ever sanctioned tournament. I was playing Dredge, and he was playing, like, standard vampires. And I felt really bad for beating him. But... He did like mess me up in one game because he had we had hex major in play, and I was like, "Get rid of Michael Gary Grave Troll." He's like, "All right, I'll hex major Grave Troll. We'll get rid of all your bridges." Oh no! <laughs> um, now clearly, I mean, you know, that's a much different category. Yeah. But I was like, "Oh man, hex major. It's a good thing nobody plays that." Caleb uh, is actually currently <laughs> up a game. Whoa! Caleb beat Ben Weinberg in the semifinals. Up one game, and the Ben Ben Weinberg. Hive Mind has fallen to Aquarium. Wow, that's... we thought this was impossible. Yeah, I Caleb. Him out with a six game one, and like his draw was fairly good. And then game two, like I just couldn't find action quickly enough, and he had lots of red blasts. Oh man. Yeah. So it looks like Ben yeah. had kind of a, a poor draw, yeah. and Caleb Kaplan. Like, Caleb was ready to resign the yeah, match. Yeah, Caleb was ready to leave if there was a top eight try split. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Ben was one who declined. <laughs> and Justice works his way yet again. So, <laughs> so Caleb, uh, so Ben was the only person in the top eight prize split who chose not to prize split. I mean, they all had to play it out. Caleb didn't leave. And Caleb beat Ben. I mean, sometimes it happens. You know, you get rewarded more often than you don't, I think. But uh, So Caleb playing his aquarium deck is through to face... Uh, Alex Bertoncini with no rug. Alex Bertoncini with no rug, yeah. That's a second top four this weekend for Caleb. Wow. Yeah, Caleb is just on fire right now. Man, I mean, he beat the person who I thought was even hotter on fire, which is Ben Weinberg, so that's pretty yeah. impressive. Old question of, you know, fire fights fire, who wins? Where apparently, uh, whoever's blazing hotter overall. So if Caleb is going to be fighting the Dredge deck, or, or sorry, he's going to be fighting Alex Bernchini with the uh, no rug deck. No rug deck. That one's going to be real interesting because uh, Progenitus is a real trump in this matchup, and Caleb doesn't really have that many ways to interact with it. Again, you know, same kind of thing. This co kind of combo end game. Caleb didn't really come prepared for that. It seems. Yeah. He just came prepared to beat up on all the fair decks with all the fair cards. Yeah, very much so. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it turns out over there. In the meantime, though, we've got a third game here to watch. Andrew Booty versus Brian Boss. These guys, are, I think they're both going down to six cards here. And we'll see what uh, happens. Six card mulligan, I think it might hurt Booty more than it hurts Boss. 
I think the six card favors Booty still. Like, all he needs is a Wild Nicodle, and Boss's deck stumbles a bit more. But down to five, I think that Brian Boss is a little bit favored because it's you have a lot less cards to apply pressure. And it gives Brian, you know, all he needs is a knight. He doesn't actually have to do anything to three off, you know, he'll turn three knight off a of Mold of Five usually. Or just play Dark Confident, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dark Confident gets you right back in the game when you mulligan. Both players keep their six card hands. And here we go. Looks like Andrew Booty cracks fetch land and brings out Taiga. He's got the Sacred Foundry sitting in his hand. <laughs> uh, Andrew Kabuti could not find the last plateau, plateau he needed, or so it seems. And so he's playing a Sacred Foundry instead. It looks like Brian Boss's hand is very good this game. Uh, I see a Mox Diamond, another land, and a Dark Confidant, and a Knight of the Reliquary. Turn one Confidant, turn two Knight. If that's the old, the old uh, Junk Nuts. If wow. There's probably a better phrase for that, but... <laughs> If there's a, usually, you know, him is a card you're worried about there, but Brian Boss does not play him to Torek in his deck. I think it's just because of mana consideration. That's what yeah. we decided, right? Yeah, um, I know Kenny Mayer played a similar deck. The mana in that deck was tuned just to fit that card, but I think that it might, you know, not be worth it just because Knight of the Relic, where Kenny was saying there's only, you know, three, not that many lands in his deck that you can sack tonight, and this deck definitely has, you know, three or four more, and that's a, you know, a few more activations of a really powerful card. So Brian Boss uh, does go for the turn one Dark Confidant, discards Snow Covered Forest to make uh, the Great One appear at his whim. And Andrew Booty has, Andrew Booty has nothing to fight. He just goes uh, Timer Glyph down. The Dark Confidant is going to flip something up. And uh, Brian Boss goes to 17 from this Curt Ape attack and takes zero off a Mox Diamond, which could be really key for this uh, Knight of the Reliquary that's probably going to come down this turn. As long as Brian has another land in his it hand. It looks like there's a White Porter card that I'm assuming is a land. Uh, I think he's going to play Mox Diamond. I think he might be debating whether he wants to play Mox Diamond or wants another land in play for that Knight of the Reliquary. Sure. He does have the Knight already at a 4-4. Four -four. Right. Dark Confidant does get in first for two. That Tarmogoyf is a good old Squire Goyf. <laughs> not the only Squire we've yeah. seen Yeah, <laughs> this may be the highest finishing Squire today, but it's not that much by... It's not there by that much. <laughs> that looks like a... Wasteland. Wasteland was his land for the turn, and he drops a Knight. That... Wow. That is a 6-6 six, six knight. What an insane six cards from Brian Boss. Turn two Dark Confidant, turn three Wasteland Knight of Reliquary. Is that a basic planes in play or for uh, Booty? I can't really tell here from the glare. Yeah, that looks like a basic planes. Yeah, that is basic planes. So he has Path for the Knight and Brian's... Mental Misstep oh, is Brian wow. Boss's last card. Hellbent? Oh, wow. What? That was... Andrew Booty puts the Sacred could, Foundry into play tapped subjectively. Could, <laughs> could he ask for much better six cards? No, I think those were... Some of the best cards, and the Bob Flip too. Just and the Bob Flip. Yeah, everything you need. The Wasteland, everything. It's pretty much the perfect six. Turn one Confidant, turn two Knight Wasteland. Yeah, the only thing that can make it better is uh, flipping a Vampire Hex I mean, right here. Oh, Swords. Uh, that's well, a reasonable. I mean, okay, one. I guess the actual nuts would be you know like turn one Dark Depths or something like that. I, I don't think you can turn one Dark or Depths. Or turn two Dark Depths or something insane uh, with Misstep. Yeah, you can't turn one Dark Depths. Dark Depths, Diamond. We've seen this one. Uh, it's a moto photo by Luis. Uh, oh, sure. Yeah, land, mox, mox, hex mage, land the Dark Depths. Oops. Yeah, and with misstep backup, maybe. Yeah, yeah, with misstep backup. Um. So, uh, now Brian has to decide what to do. He's in a very good position, but he doesn't want to accidentally give it away. He does have swords in his hands, and he's he, just going to pass the turn. Yeah, he's got two forests, or two Knight of the Reliquary lands to sack, so he's probably just going to get Maze of it all this one and start bashing with the Knight with a Maze. Yeah, and that's a good combo. Uh, looks like that's the... Uh, oh, that's not a... Yeah, there we go. So it is a basic planes. But that looks like an Umazawa's Jite. Here. Oh, Jite. Okay, that then. might keep the Knight at home. That might need... Uh, just because of the Maze of it might be needed to hold the yeah. fort into the Jite. Yeah, exactly. Now, the Jite is certainly an issue. And with no Tower of the Magistrate in sight, yeah. it's going to be harder. Now, Tower of the Magistrate is a card in Caleb's deck that I think it might start being something we'll see all over. It deals with anything with living weapon. Equipments turn off. Yeah, it's... I saw Caleb multiple times use it against artifact creatures, Mistress Factories and Artifact Creature. He had it in play against a mud deck and it was apparently devastating. <laughs> His demod opponent just like did all this stuff and then like later on in the game was in a low life and Caleb just had a knight in play. Guy plays a blocker, plays an irrelevant spell, tapped out, and Caleb just activates it and he just attacks and the guy's like, wait, what does this card do? <laughs> So, uh, as expected, Brian Boss gets a Maze of it into play. 
Uh, leaves him with three mana, able to cast anything in his deck. Dark Confident flips a mental misstep. All right, so Brian will take one for that. He does have blue mana. He can play it off a of Mox Diamond. We oh. have never said that before today, and that's something we did not think about. No, well, that's true. He can certainly do that. It's worth noting. There is a Vampire Hex Mage about to happen, though. So. Uh, and I he think, has the mental misstep he just flipped. Yeah, I, I don't know why he tapped the uh, Mox Diamonds, but I think that this game is very rapidly drawing to a close. Yeah, Brian Boss. I think I, I also think I would have I would have tapped the Bayou and the Mox and yeah, yeah. left up Misstep Mana, left, left up, up and yeah, left and up then, a lot of things, and then I would have probably got Dark Depths on my own turn too. Um, yeah, yeah. Because you don't want to have to be forced to uh, Misstep a right, Burn spell, right? If he's got a Swords or a Path in his hand. Regardless, I think Brian Boss probably has yeah, this right here. I think the only thing you're playing around here at this point is Double Path to Exile. Uh, so he activates that in response. Lightning Helix. That cannot and you be can't misstep. misstep that. I, I think that, that error is a big deal for Ryan Boss. Yeah. He's still ahead, but now he has to fight the game. Oh. Sacks that Hex Mage. <laughs> Get rid of all the counters on GTA. There are no counters on GTA. Kind of <laughs> keeps that would, would work. Wow. Yeah, see, if Brian Boss had just done it the other way, he, Dark Depths would have been guaranteed. Probably going to get Horizon Canopy here. This is the second game in a, in a row, or second game in this match. We've seen Brian Boss wait. Not, yeah. maybe It's maybe just the kind of play that he doesn't really think about. Kind of like the uh, we saw the Scalding Tarns play earlier, where a player suspended uh, Ancestral Vision with the Stoneforge in play, didn't crack his Scalding Tarns on his turn, and then uh, Caleb Durwood lightning bolted the Stoneforge Mystic when he went to crack Scalding Tarns to put Batterskull on the play. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's... Uh, Wasteland. That right. might be good enough. So. Well, Wasteland is still <coughs> quite a beating for Andrew Booty there. Yeah, it's... Uh, I think a lot of players have this instinct to just do everything at instant speed because that's how you're taught. Yeah. And you have to, have to kind of unlearn that habit. It's often right to do things on your turn. For example, like... A brainstorm? <laughs> yeah, like brainstorm is a good one or like removal spells in like the middle of combat can just yeah. be a bad idea sometimes. So Dark Confidant triggers. It's going to reveal basic swamp. Okay. Uh, that means if... Bobby's being kind to uh, Brian Boss here. Yeah. No longer has any lands to uh, sacrifice with Knight of the Reliquary, yeah, but... Yeah, counting on Bob to find him some more. Yeah. Let's see, he's got a Swords. I think you just send with the Knight here. You just gotta... Oh, that, that is a huge Knight. That though. Knight has got probably pretty it was, big. It was already six by the, the time we first counted. Like All right, so That was back when... Uh, Back, getting back when swords. dinosaurs walked the earth. That was back when those mock locals were coming to play. So now that is a 1-1 one, one Kurt Ape, too, by the way. 1-1 one, one Kurt That ape. is a lonely Kurt Ape. So, I mean, Brian Boss still in a great situation. He serves with Dark Confidant and a huge Nether Relic. Not sure exactly on the size, but it is a, approximately a gigantic slash gigantic. Yeah. Um, he is... I want to say it's probably about a 10-10 at the least. Man, it's, it's crazy how large that guy grows so quickly. So, Andrew f draws a wooded foothill, so maybe he can get something going on that respect. Maze of Us still holding off this Kurt from getting Jitay active, but I think Jitay might be too little too late by now. Maybe a few turns ago, you could get a hit in with Jitay and start getting a guy into the range where Knight can't fight it, but think about now, it's uh, pretty much a blank. Booty gets a Taiga. I think one of the cards in Brian Boss's hand might be Life from the Loam, but at this point I can't really tell and I don't really know if it makes too much of a difference. He does still have that mental misstep, correct? Uh, he didn't never use the misstep, never, so he, he should still have it. With the blue up, too. <clears throat> Alright, so Brian Boss's board is Maze of Ith, Double Mox Diamond, Swamp, Confidant, Knight of Reliquary versus Kurt Ape, Taiga, Plains, Umazawa's Jitae. And I think Brian has just got this one. Tarmogo is going to hit the board. Play it for another turn, but... Dark Confidant Flip is going to reveal... Another misstep. Not the worst, not the best. Can't have them all. Oh, Wasteland, Wasteland. the Taiga. Uh, that Knight's going to get it right in there. Yep, and that should make it... That's definitely lethal. That is a 12-12 Knight of the Relic Warrior <laughs> by my count. All right, and Kurt Ape jumps in the way. Little gorilla to this gigantic knight. Uh, 
All right, Andrew Booty passes back. I think we're going to see Brian Boss here in the top four. He will be... All right, Tarmac feels two to Brian Boss. Assuming that nothing goes catastrophically wrong, he remembers all of his bob triggers, doesn't do anything strange. Um, he'll be the only player undefeated still is that going, going Inquisition in. or a thought sees that he just cast? I think it's Inquisition. Yeah. Yep, yep it's Inquisition. Inquisition. Taking a charm away, leaving uh, Booty with just a goblin guy. Guys go in, Booty goes down to five. Knight of the Reliquary eats a Tarmogoyf. And uh, there's a Tarmogoyf for Brian. I really don't, there's absolutely nothing Andrew can do and here. And that's it. Andrew yeah. is, packs him in. And Brian Very Boss well. is the only undefeated player left in this tournament. He is, in fact, 100% undefeated. Ben Weinberg and Ruben Bressler, the other two undefeated players, both lost. Yes, they did. So, uh, congratulations to Brian Boss. The last undefeated player in the tournament who's going to be taking on Nicholas Rausch in the uh, semifinals. Nick is playing Manless Dredge, and that is a match that we're definitely going to want to keep an eye on. Yes, it in fact is. Here we go. Hey, everyone back in the booth. I'm Gavin Verhey here with Ari Lax. We just watched a pretty tight, exciting quarterfinals match between uh, Zoo and uh, Depths Junk. Yeah, it was definitely probably, I'd be willing to say it was the most interesting match to watch out of those. Though, uh, it would have been kind of funny to see what happened with that Hive Mind match there. Yeah, I mean, it's 